the long life's highway So common and well trod By the shoes of burden Christians Who won't put their trust in God Welcome to The Liberating Secret with your host, author and teacher, Sylvia Pierce. The Liberating Secret is dedicated to revealing the mystery of the gospel, which is Christ in you, the only hope of glory. Let's join Sylvia Pierce for today's lesson. Hello, this is Sylvia Pierce, and you're uh, listening to The Liberating Secret. So glad to be with you today. Uh, I'm with my very special friend, Barry Burton. He lives in Birmingham, Alabama. He comes up here frequently, and we have great fellowship together, and we love sharing that fellowship with you. Mm-hmm. We've been talking about uh, a, when Barry first got here, we were in the car together, and uh, he was telling me about the little scripture, take up your bed, arise, take up your bed and walk, mm-hmm. which comes from John chapter 5, the uh pool of Bethesda where the angel came down and dipped into the pool and the man who was crippled was lying lying there waiting for somebody to put him in and Jesus challenged him when he walked by. I thought that was interesting what Jesus said to him in the beginning, would you be made whole? That's interesting because we make our identity in coming to the pool, don't we? I mean, he could have made his identity as a cripple as uh, somebody that made a, uh, a journey every year to the pool, and uh, and did he really want to be made whole, not just to get up physically and walk, but to be made a whole person? That's what Jesus was saying to him, mm-hmm. and uh, which was a curious question because Jesus should have thought, well, of course he does. He's sitting at this pool, and why wouldn't he want to be made whole? Well, that is a very good question for all of us. Can, do we want to remain cripples and paralyzed in fear and um, and questionings about, well, if I do this, then, oh, my gosh, this will happen, and, you know, if only, and, you know, always gauging how I'm going to live by my past, by my past history, or by what I'm, gonna, what I'm projecting in the future, and basically I'm always... If I'm in fear, I'm going to be projecting bad news in the future. Something bad surely will happen. So where where am I going to live? Am I going to live in the past? Well, there wasn't any man there to lift me in the water. Or am I going to listen to this man who uh, uh, people say he's the Christ? Am I going to listen to him? And do I hear the word that he says? Uh, take arise, you know, do you want to be made whole first? Good question. That's a question to all of us. Do we like being stuck in our paralyzed places of fear and, you know, what might hold us uh, to the earthly realm instead of moving into e- the eternal realm of living? Because that's what Jesus is calling us to. Do we want to be stuck there? Do we want to, we want to, Are we willing to abandon all and just simply believe childlike faith? Take a leap of faith and believe? Almost the ridiculous in an unknown place? I don't know. Yeah, I do. And and Jesus said, Oh, then arise. Roll up your bed. Throw it away, really. You're not going to lay there anymore. Mm -hmm. And you're going to walk. You're going to walk in a new realm of eternal living because we're eternal beings. Jesus, we're not we're we're living in the temporal world and in the time world. That's for sure. We do have history. We do have the uh, future. But you know what? Really, all we really have is right now. What what what? How do I know what's going to happen to the future? I can remember living a time when I was so fearful about everything that was going to happen. Oh my gosh, this might happen and that might happen. All of a sudden, I thought fear is just is speculating what might happen like I'm a fortune teller. How do I know? Hmm. How can can I really hmm. trust a God to live my life a creative way in such a creative, uh, refreshing way that every moment is going to be different because it's not going to be pinned down to some uh, structure of how to live, mm-hmm. but it's going to be in a flow of the Spirit where eternity is now and I'm walking in that eternal realm and this man dared to say yeah I want I want to be made whole I think people out there saying the same thing and and it's simple 
how how do we how do we move into that uh, eternal realm? It's a simple act of faith. It's it's abandoning everything that I've thought to be my reality, including my identity. Because what we're we're living in in this earth, we identify with, and we make that our identity. Okay, move. Okay. Is there a way where we can drop that and move into a realm where we're just trusting and we're walking in the Lord Jesus Christ? We're believing in a person and not in doctrines that help us believe in the person. I mean, doctrines are good. They're wonderful. The Bible is wonderful and good. But basically, it's meant to help us usher us into this eternal realm we're talking about. That is, that's what it's meant to do. Yeah. And it's, <clears throat> you know, you said, is there a way? And it's simple. That can be understood as if to say, okay, well, give me the technique. Mm -hmm. Right. Well, there is a way, and it's called faith. Yes. And, but the way faith works out for the individual really it works out in one circumstance or another all the time in the now of life, in yes. the living of life, and it depends on where you are. There's the, the exercise of faith at conversion. And when a person, when any of us, all of you, were born again, the real essence of what happened is we were translated into the kingdom of the Son of God. We were born of God. And so we moved from being of the world of this whole system of reality of temporality that that we knew and were and were identified in and we were suddenly when we received Christ by faith we were translated into his kingdom now the the experiential knowledge of that may like for me was a wham in a moment and for other people sometimes it comes in little whams I mean it comes mm -hmm. in little That's right. um, burst of light along the way and it's a more progressive event for all of us it's progressive because there's a maturation as we walk by faith mm -hmm. we get right. more understanding as we as we respond in faith to the circumstances that God places us mm -hmm. in then we do uh, mature in our understanding of who we are who God is <laughs> and and the exercise of faith mm -hmm. But it depends, you know, just the how-to is a little, um, the flesh loves a how-to. Oh, we do. The flesh loves to grab onto that. So you so, can nail it. Yeah, exactly. So you can control it. Yes. So right. that you can feel like, okay, now I can be good and be pleasing to God and have the abundant life because now I've figured out I've got the knowledge and resources that I can make this work. Right. And, and we always uh, do some of that. <laughs> well, you know what? I think... I used to hate the Sermon on the Mount <laughs> because I thought, oh gosh, I could never live up to that. And that's when I was in a how-to, when I was trying to come up to the place where I could live the Sermon on the Mount because basically Jesus is talking about a life where you take no thought, where you don't, you don't have to have a, a, a preconceived ideas of how things are going to work out or how it's all going to work. You're just taking a you're, you're abandoning all your thought processes and you're not taking any thought. You're just leaping continually by faith and walking by faith in an unknown. Mm -hmm. But at first, that seems very scary. And that's, For some people, it's, they can lay hold of that more easily than others. That's exactly right. Some who are really strong in analytical thought that can be a hard thing well, to come Barry, by. Well, Barry, that <laughs> reminds me of you. It can be a very hard thing to come by. <laughs> and me. It takes a lot of pain. Yes, it does. It, it does. It really takes a lot of getting really beat down and broken and your own inability to make it work. Over and over again, I have thought, now I've got what I need. Mm -hmm. And it would come legitimately. Yes. It'll come right. legitimately as moments of light and which I do exercise faith but then subsequent to that, I don't want to get out of that. Mm -hmm. I want to be sure that I stay in that right. light, in that right. glory. And so I start analyzing what took place so that and I can understand. And how you got there. Exactly. What I, mean? I know. How, what, <laughs> how you got what there. What led up to this so that I can keep reconstructing that. And um, God sees to it very faithfully that, that he'll pull the rug right up. Well, out Barry, him. what you're saying is that you failed over and over again to, to get it nailed to get it figured out, to get it analyzed. Mm -hmm. 
because uh, it's got to come by the mind of Christ. Because it's a person. It is a person, and he has an, his own way of thinking. And it's not by us trying to figure it out, trying to come up with the answer, trying to have the right doctrine, trying to, you know. It's a simultaneous, the movement of faith is a simultaneous, it's like a paradox right. in that it is a total defeat or a surrender in utter weakness, but at the same time it is believing in the one who is total strength, <laughs> believing that he is, that he will be, and that he is being my life and Gosh. my power and my and wisdom and strength and peace it's so, hope against hope it's yeah. like abraham in romans chapter four we've talked about this before yeah really and it is it i mean actually uh the night of faith i like that i think mm -hmm. that came from a reader a, a writer that you read some sometime what is his name oh kierkegaard mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. and he uh, which is a night of faith um uh, it hopes against hope because he's walking in an unseen eternal realm. Now we're used to what we see, what we feel, what we touch. That's to us reality. And what I've known, what feels good to me is good. What feels bad to me is bad. You know, so we really can't even judge what good and evil is on that level because it's only it's it's oriented only to me and how I'm feeling at the time. So God is thrusting us and he and he does it when we're born again. He thrusts he says you cannot even see the kingdom of God until uh, you, the spirit of God comes in you and thrusts you into a new kingdom. And once <laughs> you see, once you taste Nothing else. Will Nothing do. else suffices. Nothing. God has. It's kind of a funny thing. Um, he makes us homeless. Yeah. Ooh, he does. Apart from him, there's only one home. And once we have tasted, once we have moved into Christ, as we are living life in the world, and we insidiously, necessarily, are engaging the details of life, there's a way in which there can be the suggestions that. Uh, you know, that our security is based in our finances, for instance, or that our um, uh, sense of acceptability is based in what people think of us, for mm -hmm. instance, or or my health is where my, you know, what it, things like, or whatever. Or my system of belief. Right. Or my, my having things figured out. Mm -hmm. Because Be people will spend a lot of time trying to develop these in very incredibly complex conceptual structures of scripture and what's really going on here and so forth and so on and and that there's there's certainly value in um, reading the scripture but there's a difference between reading the scripture to try to develop a system that gives me a sense of mm -hmm. I've got I've got it because I've got something figured out I can mm -hmm. I can spell out all these things mm -hmm. there's a difference between that and reading scripture to hear from the living God that's right exactly now. right uh, you know, some, I often have people that come to my house and they're always taking notes. Well, I mean, in the beginning, that's okay. But you can't, you, you're not going to pin it down. And you're not going to pin no. me down, really. Because basically, it says that in um, in Corinthians, it says that when it, as it's talking about having the mind of Christ, it says this. But he that is spiritual judges all things. Now, that's interesting. And but it says yet himself is judged of no man. Now when you're really moving in the eternal realm like this, you're not going to be judged. And I can only say this through experience and uh, about how I used to judge others that way and could, you know, uh, all of a sudden you come up with well that is how they are, you know, mm -hmm. and you get them nailed down to how that person is, so you judge them that way. But if they're spirit people, the next time you see them, they're going to be different. And so all of a sudden, the judgment that you had before has changed, and they'll blow your case. And so I call it building cases against people. Well, they're this. And it's almost like you're freezing them in time. 
they are uh, like you're taking a snapshot of them and you're not seeing that they don't belong to time. They're really eternal people, so they're moving in eternity and they belong to God. Mm -hmm. They don't belong to time. So to freeze somebody in time and say, okay, I've got them nailed, they're that way. A lot of people, you know, we don't mind if people do that because the Holy Spirit, I, I used to, I learned this a long time ago, I don't mind to be misunderstood. Now that takes kind of a inner security when you say that, well, because I'm what my security is in is in the Holy Spirit, who will, you know, confuse people until they um, they really hunger and thirst after how I'm operating. Now, am I advocating how I'm operating? No, not as a thing, but it. But how am how are we operating? We are operating from a person. We're not operating from. Uh, uh, anything other than the person. So I don't have a thing. That's why Paul said in Philippians, he says, I suffer the loss of all things, anything that I can nail down as if I have. All I have is the person of Christ himself, the eternal being that lives in me and Amen. walks his life out as me. That's all I have in life. And, and if I don't know that I have that true identity, then I'm continually living in a realm of trying to find my home somewhere. And you're not going to find it. That's why people go from one fellowship to the next fellowship to the, because they're trying to nail something down so they can have something in the time level. And God will not let you. He will not. He will continually disturb that and confuse that because he's trying, he wants to, force you, really, and he has to force us to do it because we don't want to leave our pacifiers behind. We don't want to leave the things that we've depended on behind and suffer the loss of all time, things that is suffering, to lose the way I've thought about things, the way I analyze things, the way I figure things out. Because I always say that's the last thing we lose is our ra our under my understanding of what I can hold on to and therefore that's my identity is how I understand things. And he is thrusting us out into a realm that doesn't have anything solid like that because, but, but, but basically it is the most solid because it is the reality that, get, that builds an inner security that the gates of hell can't come against. That's the, that's the uniqueness of it. We think it, this is the solid. This table is the solid or how I feel is the solid. And that's not. The real rock of revelation that comes against, that comes inside of us when we live from the reality of Christ alone, you see, then produces such stability and security within us because it's his own life that the gates of hell can't come against that. Right. That's exactly <clears throat> where God is thrusting us into. And he first, in, a, in any individual's life, there's first the crisis of conversion in which God presents to us the call. He knocks on the door of our hearts and calls us into life eternal, calls us into Christ, calls us to believe. And he sets up circumstances. The circumstances will have to be set up in some way that we see a contrast between the absolute love of God and everything else. Mm -hmm. Everything that we have known of life that is relative and compromised and tainted and we see that everything's passing away there's nothing eternal that's right but that the right. one pure truth the one single truth mm. of god who is absolute self for others absolute mm -hmm. love which is demonstrated in the cross mm -hmm. and first he brings us there and that's how we enter in and we enter in through that choice of faith that moment in which we decide nothing else matters but you lord and mm -hmm. so we call on the name of the Lord mm -hmm. to save us, to be our, our Savior in our life. That cost us everything, though we may not realize it at the time. We're actually choosing to believe in a completely different basis, a totally different reality, a totally different point of reference, the one eternal one, the invisible and, and um, universal God. Mm -hmm. So th then we're born again. Mm -hmm. So then the Spirit confirms within us, whether it's immediately or whether it's subsequently, God brings to us a, a knowing of his love and of the life. And that becomes a 
a um, contrast to life in the world from that point forward. Once we've moved into the life, then we're the salt and light in yes, the world. Yes, we are. And God uses, though, that same dynamic. I mean, we experience the living in the world, the now, in this um, contrasting way in which the truth that we know, the absolute of God that we've received as our very life when we were born again, circumstance after circumstance will bring us to a point to where we, we're experiencing kind of a gut-wrenching um, uh, contrast there. We know that truth, but that's not what we're experiencing in the moment. What mm -hmm. we're experiencing in the moment is um, all of the stuff of this world. You know, whether it's contention, whether it's uh, whatever it may be, or fears, or whatever. And that's a calling card. God uses that contrast because we yes, know yes. what the true life is. Now, for a while, it's about us. For a while, all we're oriented to is, I want to be in that wholeness that I know. Mm -hmm. And once we've tasted of it, n never again mm -hmm. will anything of this world satisfy and be a home to us. Although we may be pulled into temporarily trying to make a home out of it but God will call us back. But the point then is that we mature through exercising of faith after circumstances, from one circumstance to another. Um, then we, God comes to show us that, it's, that we're done. We're seated at the right hand of God in Christ, as Paul says in Ephesians, and that we have died. It's no longer about us. We don't have a me in my That's life right. that I'm needing to accomplish, that I'm needing to... Um, get back into to good graces with God or, or whatever. Right. That's all done. <laughs> it's all Christ in us, and we're engaging the difficult circumstances in the world for the sake of others. That's why we're here as salt and light in the world, just as when I was lost, there were a few people here and there walking that came through mm -hmm. my life, so to speak, that I encountered who were walking by faith loving God and trusting God and I saw in them something that I didn't know and it made a conviction happen deep down inside and a hope. On the one hand I knew that my life was wrong when I saw them but I also had a hope that life could be that and they were light and salt and so they were the way that God was speaking to me and calling me into the body of Christ and likewise that is all that our lives really are about in this world now. It's walking by faith from one circumstance to another. And we can't nail down exactly how that's going to happen. Mm -hmm. We just do it. Mm -hmm. We just get up and walk mm -hmm. and trust Christ. And we, and we say by faith, Lord, you are my life. And I'm just going forward, living my life and trusting you. You are causing me to walk in your ways, as he promised, as he stated in the scripture. And So then occasionally he will then we're able to have fellowship and it, it, it confirms, oh yeah, that's, that's the way it happened to me too. Mm -hmm. So then, but we didn't know that on the front end. The front mm -hmm. end, we're just blindly trusting him and walking by faith in everything we do, really. I mean, we don't have outer assurance that anything, anything's going to work. Mm -hmm. I mean, we, somebody said we walk on 60,000 fathoms of water all the time. Mm -hmm. Because how do we know? We don't. It's always a leap and, and a trust. And once we've, we've trusted, it does give us more confidence to know he's, he is there to be trusted. He does. He, I can remember the time when I felt like that God was asking me to abandon something that I had drawn my security from all my life. Some little bit, you know, maybe from my marriage, maybe from my identity as a wife, as a, as a, as a mother, as, you know, um, a Bible teacher, anything, you know, and I, it was a very radical time for me. And I felt like I was on a cliff and God was saying, jump off. Well, I couldn't, I mean, to, to what, to die, you know, how can I do that? How can I let go? And it's like I couldn't really let go of what had been security to me. And I always laugh and say, but God came by and stomped my fingers. So I had to let go. And when I did, I fell into an unknown, unseen reality that was spirit, and the spirit holds me. And then now the secure, the security of the spirit holding me 
is 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 going to hold me through eternity, really. And it and it is the rock that um, my house is built on. The other was building my house on sand, and it was changing all the time. Mm -hmm. But this is 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 permanent security. Now now the Holy Spirit didn't just let me go to my, he let me die to everything I thought was reality. And this was as a Christian. So I'm not talking about being born again. I'm talking about as a Christian, mm -hmm. I went through a period of really dying to everything that I was holding on to. Even the, the way I believed things, the way I saw things in the Bible, even good things I had to, they were still things to me and security to me and things that I, that, that, um, we're only going to encumber my walk of faith because I would eventually run back to the things that were seen and not to the things that were unseen, which are eternal. So God knew that I, I would always try to build my home there in that reality. And because so, what's being implied there is that there's this self that is independently needing to um, construct these things yes. that gives life stability right. and security. That's exactly right. That there is a needy me here that needs, mm -hmm. you know, I might, you know, have some security one way and feel pretty good about myself, but basically there's still a needy me that needs to have some kind of outer security to hold me up, some kind of prop. And God has to break those away. And when he does, that's a very radical thing. I mean, and, and I always say you really can't let go of the things, those things. They, no. You can't because it would then be up to me. It wouldn't be totally the power of the Spirit that no. releases me from it. If it was up to you and you could do it, then that's that very self that God right. has to expose as a lie. That's exactly right. It's the very right. self-ability to make life right. That's right. And it's exactly what has to be, um, has to have the rug pulled out from under that's it in right. order for us to truly say, Lord, it's only you. Yes. You are the only hope and way and truth and yes. power and meaning and fulfillment of life. And as Jesus said, no one, unless he gives up everything he has, even his own life, <laughs> yes. cannot be my disciple. Yeah. Well, it sounds so harsh, well, how do you yet get, it is so glorious. Yes. I always say, how do, you, how do you give up your life? Well, first of all, you, can just, you just recognize the truth of what mm -hmm. Jesus said about you, what Paul said in Romans, he says, you, you are dead. I mean, Colossians says that. So I can, I can reckon that. So I can't give up my life. How do I give up my life? I can't. Oh, but wait a minute. I can. I'll, okay, I'm going to align myself with what God says about me. I can do that. Okay, I'll say it. Doesn't mean anything to me. Now, God's going to have to do the work. <laughs> what does that mean? Mm -hmm. You don't want to say that if, you, if you're not ready to be stripped from a lot of things. And you do want to say it because every one of us, every Christian wants to know the life of the Spirit and the free life, the liberating life that we talk about here on The Liberating Secret. Everybody wants to know that inside mm -hmm. their heart. And so because of that, we're saying it, it's just simple, just simple faith, just simply agreeing with God. You're dead, buried. You've been crucified with Christ. You were buried with Him, and He and when He was raised, you were raised, and now you're seated with Him in the heavenlies. And that same heavenly man, the Lord Jesus Christ, has come inside of you to live your life. The more I try, the more I fall. I finally see the writing on the wall. The problem is. What I see A separate him outside A separate me In a desert land